All right, and that's it. This is the FormBot Raptor sent over to me by TinyMachines3D.com. I'm gonna be walking you guys through this week's video on how to actually install and get this bad boy set up and up and running, along with a few tips and tricks on things that you might wanna check on when doing a build for this 3D printer. I'll be doing some follow-up videos on this overall build, but before we get started, I probably need to rewind things a bit to show you actually how the installation actually happened. Because it's all finished here, I need to just rewind it real quick. Let's do this. Before we get started on the assembly of the FormBot Raptor, I just want to mention again that this machine was sent over to me by Chris over at Tiny Machines 3D. They do an absolutely amazing job at making sure the printers that you're purchasing from them are tested and verified that everything works correctly before it is ever sent back out the door and over to you. So if you're interested in more information on the FormBot Raptor, I'll have links down below to tinymachines3d.com where you can check out this printer and other printers that the crew over there at Tiny Machines offers. So there are no actual printed instructions that come with this printer. Everything you're going to need comes here on the SD card. And in fact, uh, the crew over at Tiny Machines has also included a few additional files there if you end up purchasing it from those guys. The first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is assemble the two main pieces of the printer, move the print bed out of the way, then place the X and Z frame piece on top of the base frame. You're gonna then take the two large M8 screws and insert those through the bottom. It's easiest to place this over the edge of a table to insert these screws in and use the wrench that's provided. Next, we're gonna take the electrical box and assemble that on the back of the printer. You'll see that there is a plug that easily inserts into the base of the printer. Then once that's inserted, you'll notice that the little side pieces snap and latch on. And then you can just take the side brackets and mount those onto the actual printer frame. Next, we're gonna to wanna to install the control unit onto the front of the printer. Before we actually insert it into the frame, what we're gonna to wanna to do is connect the wires on the back of the control unit. You'll notice there's an XP1 and an XP2. The gray wire will connect to XP1, while the black wire will connect to XP2. Once those are connected, you can insert the control unit into the front of the frame and hand tighten the bolt. Next, we can install the adjustable spool holder into the top portion of the frame. You'll also wanna make sure to, unlike what I'm doing here in the video, adjust this so that the spool holder is pushed all the way over to the left so it's completely out of the way of the print head once you're printing. Before we install the extruder, we wanna make sure that the mounting bracket is nice and secure. Mine had a little bit of a wobble to it, so just take a little wrench and tighten up the bolts that are holding that in place and you should be able to get that nicely secured in place. And you wanna make sure that the wheels and the head is still able to move freely, but that that's nice and secure. Then we can remove the screws that are holding in the extruder plate. Once the cover plate's removed, we can now place the extruder on the mount and use the three screws provided and attach the extruder to the mount. Once that's attached, you can screw back on the extruder cover. Once the main assembly is done, we can now start attaching the wires. First, we'll take a look at the X-axis cables. Those will be inserted in the electrical box that we installed on the very back of the printer. Once those are in place, we can now install the heated bed cable that should be the large green cable that's attached to the heated bed. Now we can take a look at the dual Z cables and make sure that those are properly attached. You're gonna attach the left to the left and the right to the right. The one on the right can be a little bit tricky to get to. This printer also has a large LED light panel. Simply install the green plug into the lower base portion of the printer. Next, it's time to connect the extruder. Plug that into the electrical box that we installed on the back of the printer. Use a screwdriver to tighten that up. Then install the other end of the cable onto the extruder itself. And again, use a screwdriver to make sure that's nice and tight. Once that's done, take your power cord, plug it into the printer, and flip it on. Before you start printing, you'll want to double check that your dual Zs are perfectly aligned. Mine was shipped slightly out of alignment, which can happen with dual Z machines. 
To fix this, it's very simple. Just grab a piece of thin, flat wood or any other really thin, flat, firm material that you can insert under each of the dual Zs. Here I'm using a piece of old flooring from my house. You could then go into the menu system, disable the steppers under prepare menu, disable steppers, then go under move axis and move Z and move by one millimeter. You wanna lower this until it touches one of the tips of the boards. Once it does this, you can now adjust the other end that is now uneven by adjusting the coupler on the rod. You wanna do this until each end is perfectly aligned. You're now ready to start your bed leveling and printing. All right, and here is the assembled Raptor printer. This thing is massive. It's so cool. This printer sports a 400 by 400 by 500 build volume. This also includes a BL touch sensor that will help you more easily do bed leveling when it comes to printing. There is also included from Tiny Machines a filament runout sensor if you purchase it from them. This also has a custom set of firmware that's installed thanks to the folks over at Tiny Machines. This also has a 24 volt power supply that means that your large bed here will heat up much faster than some of the other printers that are out there that are about the same size as this machine here. Should also mention that this retails for $925 over on tinymachines3d.com. If you use the code Jesse Raptor, that'll get you $10 off the order as well. I'll have links down below for anybody that's interested in picking up one of these machines for yourself. And uh, yeah, I'll be doing some more videos on this machine here in the upcoming weeks. I'm really looking forward to getting a big print going on this guy here, seeing how this compares to the CR10 S4 since it's comparable build size or even to the CR10. So I didn't see any installation videos of this online, so I figured I'd make one and share it with you guys. Hopefully it helps somebody out there in the future that's looking to pick up one of these and wanting to know what they're in for for an installation. Again, it's pretty straightforward and simple when it comes to printer assemblies. All in all, if I wasn't recording and doing all the editing and repositioning cameras, it's about a 20 minute build, if that. But I just wanna say thanks again for watching you guys. I hopefully you enjoyed. If you haven't already, consider subscribing. Leave me some comments down below and I will see you guys next time. Bye now.